Algebra 2 Cram, New York State Algebra 2 Regents, Common Core, Basics, Trigonometric Functions, Concept Number 1, Standard Position. The odds of someone doing exactly what you tell them to do is pretty slim, but I guarantee that if you cram with me, you'll become an Algebra 2 Master. What we're doing here is so effective. I'm coaching you to turn your wants and desires of getting an A or perfect test scores into a new paradigm. I want to include everyone who needs a boost in Algebra 2. If I could literally stick every single math student with a syringe containing a healthy dose of eye-opening awareness of their inner mathematical genius, I would. So inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com to get your healthy dose and order this complete cram session, okay? Be sure to spread the word to your peers, classmates, and colleagues who could also really benefit from this cram session. Tell them to inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com so they, they can have uh, this knowledge as well. And you'll want them to know all of this because they'll make great study buddies. Last but not least, cramming often has a negative con connotation, like it gets a bad rap. But what people are really thinking of is the concept of hurrying, which is a result of fear and can consequently be destructive. We're not hurrying here, okay? We're cramming. There's a huge difference. Hurrying is jam-packing tons and tons of unorganized information into your mental, spiritual DNA over a very um, tiny amount of elapsed time, whereas cramming is taking quantum leaps in your understanding in an organized way that sticks and seems to have occurred over a really small instance, okay? So let's delve into the concept of standard position and see how it relates to trigonometric functions. Standard position and trigonometric functions. Describe the concept of an angle theta in standard position on our Cartesian coordinate plane. Okay. And Cartesian coordinate plane is just another way of saying an xy coordinate plane. And here goes our angle theta. So I'll give you a moment to think. Definitely press pause if you need to. Okay. All right, so hopefully by now you were able to arrive at an answer, and if not, that's completely fine. Okay, so to understand the concept of um, standard position, you have to impress three key points upon your memory, okay? You really have to drive these things home, and when you do, this is going to simplify finding any trigonometric function or value for some specific angle, okay? All right, the first point that I want you to understand is that for an angle theta in standard position, the vertex, that is the originating point, is located at the origin or zero on a Cartesian coordinate plane. Second, I want you to notice that this ray is called the initial side ray and it's located on the positive x axis, okay? It could have been located on the negative as well, but specifically for a standard position, we're dealing with the positive x axis. Third, the other ray terminates in quadrant one, and it's called the terminal side ray. We're call, we'll call it R for short, okay? <laughs> R for ray. I know a ray, do you know a ray? And then fourth, um, P is a point on the terminal side of angle theta, okay? And we're going to use it as our cutoff point for the terminal side ray. So for our purpose, we're going to say that um, the extent of the x-coordinate of P is the extent of the initial side ray. And we're also going to say that the extent of the height of um, point P is the extent of 
the um, terminal side array. So here you can see that we use our standard position angle to form a triangle just by specifying a point on the terminal side ray P, whose horizontal extent we'll call will stop or we'll cut off at its x coordinate and its vertical extent will cut off at the y coordinate. The, these this fourth point, well the fourth and fifth point, because the y cutoff point was the fifth point are the main things that you have to understand to really be able to calculate trigonometric functions based on visualizing this concept in your mind, okay? All right, and last but not least, the sixth point that I want you to understand is that R, which you know is ray, short for ray, has a measurement of R equals x squared, the square root of x squared plus y squared. This is basically just a variation of the um, the distance formula, okay? So I just want you to take a moment and breathe and take this all in. And notice that um, our, our angle theta in standard position is acute because it's bound by the quadrantal angles 0 degrees and 90 degrees. So we know that any angle between those two barriers is an acute angle. And in case you forgot what a quadrantal angle is, it's just an angle whose um, terminal side ends on either the x-axis or the y-axis. And that can be in any direction, not just the positive directions, OK? And the magnitude or the, the length of um, segment, uh, segment um, what do you call this? The length of segment R is basically going to be um, a variation of the distance formula, okay? So understanding these concepts was not difficult at all. And once you understand this, you can calculate any trigonometric value, including the sine of theta, the cosine of theta, the tangent of theta, the secant of theta, the cosecant of theta, the cotangent of theta, okay? So it's going to be very simple to understand this. And anytime you have to come up with a trigonometric value for a specific angle, it might be convenient to refer back to this picture um, in your imagination, okay? All right.